Hello and welcome back to the Consistia the Coke YouTube channel. I'm your host for this video, Reverend Jake Zay with the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church located in Dolby, Queensland, Australia. Welcome back to our mini-series, Ask the Consistory, where we answer listener questions. And today I'm addressing the question of when should we celebrate the Feast of the Visitation? Now, the Feast of the Visitation is to celebrate the visit of Mary to her cousin Elizabeth. And that's when the baby John the Baptist leaps in the womb and recognizes Jesus as the Messiah. And generally there have been two main dates that have been given. There is the more traditional historic July 2nd and the more modern Vatican II uh, May 31st. There is also a third date on March 30th. I'm going to explain the history of this feast and the dating of this feast and explain why there are the three different dates. And I'm going to... I mean, what day should we celebrate the feast on? I mean, ultimately it's going to be an Adiaphora, uh, but I'm going to give you my own personal opinions on the matter, and feel free to take that as some advice. I, you know, celebrate on whichever day you want. Celebrate on a different day if you really want. Um, I'm just going to give you my reasons for why I think we should celebrate it on the particular day I like to celebrate it on, but let's get underway with the actual video itself. The text says that after Mary had received this promise from Gabriel that she was going to concede the Messiah and that also Elizabeth was six months pregnant with John the Baptist. It says that Mary got up and she, with haste, headed off to see Elizabeth. Uh, in verse 56, it adds that Mary was with Elizabeth for three months. Since Elizabeth was six months pregnant. When Mary got pregnant three months later would coincide with the birth of John. So thus Mary is sticking around until the birth of John and then leaving. Now according to the Gospel of John it says that it took Jesus about three days to travel from Judea to the city of Cana in Galilee. Thus depending on the individual it would have taken Mary probably about three to five days to get from Nazareth down to where um, Elizabeth and Zachariah lived. Now, this means that Mary would have actually arrived sometime around the end of March, since the conception of Jesus, or the Feast of the Annunciation, is on March 25th, nine months before December 25th. So, three to five days later, you know, basically we're looking at March 30th. And so, this would make us wonder why would we celebrate the visitation on July 2nd? if it's likely Mary arrived on March 30th. Well, there's actually a rather unusual history regarding the dating of the Feast of Visitation. And the, the history of the Feast of Visitation goes back to the 1200s, when the, the Western Church started to celebrate the Feast of the Visitation of Mary. But the reason why it's on July 2nd goes back all the way to the 400s. In the 400s AD, the Byzantine Emperor Leo the Great retrieved numerous holy relics from the Holy Land, and he brought them back to the city of Constantinople, and amongst them was the Holy Robe of the Virgin Mary. Now, in 860 AD, during the Rus-Byzantine War, the Russians were invading Constantinople. During this invasion, it was decided to remove the holy relics from the smaller, and I'm probably not going to pronounce this right, Blakshinane Church, and move them to the larger Hagia Sophia in order to preserve them. But according to legend, as they were moving the relics, the church held this procession around the city. And during the procession, the edge of the holy robe was placed into the sea by the patriarch Photius I. And according to the legend, it said that the Virgin Mary then sent a storm to destroy the Russian ships. Um, being Lutherans and rejecting the cult of saints, we would reject this idea. Uh, but according to the legend, the Russians then left Constantinople. But according to the account, the Russians left Constantinople on June 25th, and on July 2nd, the Holy Robe of the Virgin Mary was returned back to the Blackstone Church. In honour of the miracle, 
Patriarch Photius declared a new annual feast, in which the Holy Road would be taken out of the church and then it would be returned to the church on July 2nd. During the return of this robe, they read Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45, the visitation of Mary. In 1263 AD, Franciscan monks adopted this date of July 2nd for the celebration of the Feast of the Visitation of Mary. Later in 1389, Pope Urban VI in an attempt to try and reunite the Western Church and the Eastern Church, officially adopted the Feast of the Visitation of Mary, which was held on July 2nd. Now, the date of July 2nd seems a strange date to celebrate, since Mary arrived sometimes towards the end of March, and the Feast of the Birth of John the Baptist is on June 24th. Why on earth would you celebrate the visitation of Mary after John has already been born? One of the ways Rome seeks to uh, reconcile this is that they teach that John was born on June 24th. That's the nativity of John the Baptist. If you count eight days to the circumcision of John the Baptist, that's July 1st. And then for Mary is leaving on July 2nd after the circumcision of John. Thus, Rome isn't celebrating the arrival of Mary, but the entire visit of Mary. Thus, they celebrate it on July 2nd when Mary finishes her visitation. Now, this, this is the theological reason that Rome tries to give, but the reality is that Rome was just sticking with July 2nd for political reasons because it lined up with the feast that was already being held in the Eastern Church and Pope Urban was attempting to reunite the East and the West together. What is ironic about this is that even though the East celebrated the Feast of the Holy Robe on July 2nd, they never celebrated the visitation of Mary as a feast at all. The Eastern Church has only recently started to celebrate the visitation of Mary as of the 1800s. And what is the most ironic part of this is that Rome decided to go with July 2nd as an attempt to appeal to the Eastern Church. But when the Eastern Orthodox adopted the celebration of the visitation of Mary, they celebrate it on March 30th, five days after the Annunciation. And to this day, the Feast of the Visitation is only celebrated by some Eastern Orthodox churches. It's not universally accepted. Now, as for the Western Church moving forward, the Feast of the Visitation was always celebrated on July 2nd. In 1528, Martin Luther wrote a text titled Instruction of Visitors, and in this document, Luther gave a list of church festivals which were intended to be retained inside the Lutheran Church. And amongst this list, he has Annunciation, the Purification of Mary, also known as Candlemas, uh, the Visitation, Christmas, the Circumcision of Christ, Epiphany, Easter, Ascension, and Pentecost, along with also the Saint Days of the Apostles, John the Baptist, Mary Magdalene, and also the Feast Day of Michael and All Angels. Now, historically, the Lutheran Church has retained the celebration of the Visitation on July 2nd, since we are are part of the Western Church tradition, and that is historically, since at least the 1200s, or more accurately since 1389, that has been the official practice of the Western Church. Now, if you read the older Lutheran hymnals, that's the date that you'll find for the Visitation of Mary. Although, things changed in 1970 when Pope Paul VI, during the Vatican II liturgical revisions, moved the Feast of the Visitation to May 31st. This was done in order to have it be between the Annunciation and before the birth of John. However, this date is very unusual and seems to make absolutely no sense. It's two months after Mary would have arrived and it's about a little, little less than a month before John would have been born. So again, it doesn't really make sense why you would celebrate the visitation on May 31st. Um, since Mary arrived at Elizabeth's house possibly around the end of March, 
it makes sense to celebrate the visitation of Mary on March 30th like the Eastern churches do. Now, since 1917, the more traditional Tridentine Catholics have retained the visitation on July 2nd, while the modern Catholics celebrate it on May 31st. The Roman Catholic Church in Germany, however, got special dispensation from the Pope to retain the celebration on July 2nd, and most German Lutherans have continued the same. In the Lutheran Church of Australia's hymnal, which was written in 1973, they adopted the new date of May 31st, but the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod's 2006 Lutheran Service Book, it gives the option of either celebrating the visitation on the old July 2nd or the new May 31st. So, essentially there are three dates given. March 30th, May 31st and July 2nd. If you want to be historical and follow the historical tradition, go with July 2nd. If you're wanting to go for a more accurate date, and actually have the celebration of the visitation coincide with the arrival of Mary at Elizabeth's house, then celebrate it on March 30th. Personally, I prefer March 30th, and in my local congregation here in Australia, that is what we are intending to do as of next year. We're planning to celebrate the Feast of the Visitation on March 30th rather than July 2nd. If you really want to, you can also celebrate it on May 31st, but I don't really see a reason why. There is no theological significance or even historical significance to celebrate it on May 31st. Uh, again, you can celebrate on any of those three dates, or if you really want, pick another date. My personal preference is for March 30th, some more traditional Lutherans prefer it on July 2nd, and some people may prefer to have it on May 31st. It's just my own personal preference for March 30th, and you feel free to do it if you want. Um, it's an Adiaphora feast, it's not Easter or Christmas. Um, it's not to say that it's not a major feast. In the Lutheran Church, we have regarded that major feasts are anything to do with the life of Christ, so the visitation of Mary would still be a major feast, and it would be a day to have Holy Communion. But it's not like the major, major feasts like Easter or Christmas or Pentecost which uh, even the Book of Concord talks about in the early days, uh, Easter, Christmas and Pentecost were always regarded as like a holiday in which nobody worked. So, you know, there, there's this distinction between like minor feasts, major feasts, and then like the major, major feasts. Um, that, that's not really a reason to say don't celebrate the visitation of Mary. It's just saying that it's not one of those major feast and it's not really on a fixed date um, so feel, feel free to celebrate on whatever day you wish like I said there's three different options and my preferred one is March 30th but others may prefer July 2nd um, hope that answers the question as to when should we celebrate the visitation of Mary I've been your host Reverend Jake Zabel goodbye and God bless <laughs>